What's going on guys? My name is Kaylor and welcome to the YouTube channel. Today I have another YouTube banner tutorial for you guys. This one's going to be a bit of a quick tutorial. We have two cool effects that we're going to be doing. One is a glitch effect on some text and on a 3D effect on the background. The 3D effect is going to be like a 3D glasses kind of effect where the red pit and blue pixels don't align, which looks pretty cool. Alright, so I've just imported a broken down plane image. You can use any image you want, but this is what I'm going to go with. I think it looks really good with the uh, glitched text effect. I'm just going to blow it up holding shift to keep my image size and just scale it up. And I'm going to really target this black uh, sandy looking ground here, which looks pretty good. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and right click on it and rasterize the layer so we can edit it. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the channels. And on the channels we're going to target the red channel and we're going to add a filter, distort, a shear to it. And so what the shear is going to do is if you look at this image down here, it's just literally pushing over uh, the pixels as we move this here. So we barely want to move this. We don't want the shear to be extremely large or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and center this back up and then I'm going to shear it just about one pixel to the left. And then I'm going to click OK. And you'll see the image just shifted. So when we click on the RGB channel to add all the red, green, and blue back, you can tell that our red is slightly shifted over, which looks pretty awesome. So the next thing we're going to do is just apply some image effects to this image just to kind of make it look more like a banner. So I'm just going to add a new layer and I'm going to grab a brush and make sure I have a regular black selected and make sure the hardness is on zero and the size uh, doesn't really matter. I'm going to zoom out a bit and then we're just going to click and drag along the edges like this, maybe curving it just a bit as we go down like that to kind of add some cool corner effects going on like that. So I'm going to do that on both sides of my image and that looks pretty cool. And then if you need to, you can drop the fill of this layer as needed, just depending on how much black you want on the edges. I'm probably gonna leave mine all the way up. All right, so let's start making this image look more like a background to a banner. So I'm gonna add some blur. So go ahead and grab your image and let's duplicate that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drag the copy below the original. I'm gonna right click on the original and I'm just gonna add a red. This is just going to tell me, hey, this is the original, so I don't get confused later. Next, I'm going to turn off the copy. This is only temporary. We're about to turn it back on. But for this effect, I'm going to show you guys what it actually looks like before we do it. So I'm going to have the broken plane selected, and then I'm going to add a mask. And the reason we turned off our other image is so we can see what the mask is actually doing. So I'm going to grab a black brush and make sure the hardness is at zero. Mine's about 800 pixels. So I'm just going to start in the center of the image, and I'm just going to do a circular pattern until it looks about like that. And then I'm gonna press V for my selection tool and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on our copy. So as you can see, if we had the copy on, we wouldn't be able to tell what we were painting. So that's why I had you turn it off. So we're gonna add a blur onto our original copy of the plane. So I'm gonna click on the plane and I'm gonna go filter, blur. Let's try Gaussian blur for now. And that may be a little much about four, let's just change it to four, 3.9 is gonna bug me, and click OK. So now we can click on our mask and we can adjust this blur and add more or less depending on what we want. So I'm gonna grab a white brush to start and let's begin painting more onto our image here so we can add just a little bit more blur towards the center. Kinda want that part of the plane to be blurred. Grab a black brush, make sure we have a curve going on. That looks pretty good. So if I zoom in really close, you can see over here is really blurred and then it kind of gradually gets really clear here in the center. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start making a glitch effect on some text. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press T and then I'm gonna type the word create. That's what the word I'm gonna be using. You guys can use whatever you want. Go ahead and change this to a nice white color and then click okay. And to make sure you have snap on, just click view and then make sure snap is checked. And that'll just allow you to snap this into the center of your banner until it snaps like that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna cut this up and then draw a bunch of little squares around it. So let's go ahead and add some squares. So just make sure you have white selected. And then I'm gonna add a bunch of rectangles and squares, pretty thin, kind of like that, just around and on top of the text. Because when you have a glitch, you have pixels going everywhere and you want it to look believable that, hey, this text is glitching. So maybe a little square overlapping on the A, uh, one coming off the E going into the R. Just different widths and heights 
just depending on how you want the effect to look. Okay, the more random the better. I'm gonna have some randomly floating out here after the E. And the T's looking plain, so let's add a small glitch in the middle of the T. And then maybe let's add one above the T. No, I don't like that. Let's try around the A connecting to the E like that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. All right, so that is our rectangles done. So I'm going to click on the topmost rectangle, and I'm going to hold Shift and click on the bottom one. And then I'm just going to group these. Then I'm going to right click on it and click merge group. And that's just going to make it just one image. If you wanted to save the rectangles, you could just copy the group, turn off one layer, and then, and then merge the new copy. But I'm not going to be adjusting these. I think that looks pretty good. So we're good to go. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut up the create. So right now it is a text. So we want to make this an image. So just right click on that and click rasterize type. And that's going to change it from a type to an image that we can work with. So now we can just turn that off and see that it's an image. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a uh, rectangle marquee tool. And let's go ahead and start cutting this thing up. So let's take out a thin section of the C and the R. And then if we zoom in real quick, if I just press V, you'll see that our selection tool, when we highlight inside the marquee tool, we have scissors. So that means when we click and drag, this is actually going to take this section with us. So we just want to change this ever so slightly like that. That looks good. And we're just going to begin uh, just cutting up the image. So I'm pressing M on my keyboard to get my selection tool. And then I'm pressing V for to just move it around. So M for the marquee tool. Let's cut up. No, I, didn't, I don't think I grabbed all that. Let's cut up just a bit of the T. And let's do all the way through the A. And V for my selection tool and cut that up. And then let's do halfway through the E and all the way through the A. I think we'll look pretty cool. It's a real thin one. Drag that like that. Yeah, that's looking pretty good for a glitch effect. Command D to deselect. Let's do one more thin one through the R and the E. So let's go like that, just below that line. V and drag it just a bit down. Yeah, it's looking good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on Create, hold Shift, and click on Group 1. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to click Merge Layers. So that's just going to make this one group. And we're going to add some effects to this now. So go up to Filter, and let's add some noise. So just click Noise, Add Noise. And let's do just a little bit. Uh, maybe 22. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then we're also going to add some blur. So let's try a Gaussian blur, and then we might do a motion blur if the Gaussian blur looks bad. Maybe a one pixel Gaussian blur. That's looking OK. And then let's try a motion blur and see what that looks like. Motion blur. OK, actually, let's copy this layer and drag the copy below the original. And then let's add some motion blur onto that. And then, yeah, that's looking much better. So we have the motion blur behind. That's adding a nice effect. So I like that right there. I'm going to go ahead and click on the copy, hold shift, grab the group, and then I'm going to merge these layers as well, just because I want to size this up. So let's scale this holding shift. Center that up. Yeah, that's looking really clean. I like this. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to add some lighting effects, and then we'll be done with our effect here. So I'm going to click a new layer. I'm going to grab a brush. I'm going to make it a decent size, maybe a 1,000. I can grab a 1,000. Let's just go 1,400. That's okay. And make sure it's white. And then we're going to add some lighting maybe there, and a little bit down there, and maybe a little there. That looks good. And we'll drag the fill down on that. So we have a little bit. There we go. All right, and then let's do let's do some colored lighting. Let's try that. Since we got the the red going on back here from the uh, 3D effect, maybe a red light would look good. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my eyedropper, try to get a decent red. That looks good. Grab a brush. Let's make it a little bit smaller brush. And then there's a lot of red here, so I'll click there. 
there's a lot up here so maybe have a light that's a bit bigger shining down onto the plane would look nice yeah it looks pretty cool and then maybe a bit there to brighten that up and then on this let's try playing with the layer styles maybe lighten yeah that looks really good i like that a lot we might actually add a gradient into this as well so i'm just going to drag the fill down for now to about 50 percent and then let's add a gradient so maybe a light orange we might be able to pull off so i'm going to drag this slider up to orange uh do we want a dark orange let's go with a soft orange for now and then we're going to add that just off of the red lighting we added so where do we add that okay so let's try maybe under the text we'll drag this layer under the text if we do this and then let's do one big one i'm going to zoom out really far make sure you have that soft brush and i'm going to click over here okay that looks good and let's drag this below our text layer and then i think we did soft light no, we did lighten, didn't we? Let's try lighten on this layer as well. No, I don't like that. Soft light actually looked better. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Let's drag the fill down just a bit. 83. And then we're going to add one more uh, kind of gradient to the left side, I think, or in the middle. Let's do a red one. So, change this to a red. Let's go with a lighter red. That looks good. I'm going to make my brush a bit smaller. And let's try from the bottom corner up like this. And then right where we did this white light up here in the corner, I'm going to make my brush a bit smaller. And then click right there. So we have a kind of a little bitty glow going on, but it's not overpowering. Change this to soft light as well. I'm going to try lighten. See which one looks better. Okay, soft light I think is the winner. And then we'll drag the uh, fill down just a bit. That looks good. Okay, so now that we're done with pretty much all the effects we're going to do, there's a few things we can do to the entire thing. And I'm going to do that by clicking on the topmost layer, go down here and click on the half circle, and let's add some overall lighting effects and color changes. So let's go to levels first. I'm going to try to press the auto button and see how this looks. That's too dark. All right, so I'm just going to adjust it myself. So let's grab the lightness slider, drag that up so we get those colors popping. Let's shift the middle just a bit so the darks pop in the middle. And then maybe bring the darkness over about five. I think that works well. Okay, so the next thing we're going to add is let's try vibrance and see what that does. That's really making those colors pop. So I'm going to actually bring this up to about 80. And that makes some colors really warm. I like that. And then the saturation will kind of counterbalance the 80 to about 12. Looks good. And then we can add a curves. I'm gonna try to press auto and see what that looks like. Kind of made it a little gray, I don't like that. Let's actually leave the curves alone for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and let's do a hue and saturation. I'm just gonna play around with the slider to see what we can come up with. Okay, negative two looks a little good. Saturation. Wow, that's a weird looking effect. Um, let's try to drag it up just a bit. Okay, I kind of like that, but I don't really know. <laughs> Let's just do it a little bit for now. We can always change it later. So 20% or plus 20 looks good. And then the lightness of the image, I want to brighten up a bit to kind of uh, match that white text. That's looking good. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the top layer by clicking on it, and I'm going to hold shift and grab the bottom layer. And I'm going to group it. I'm going to duplicate our group. I'm going to turn off the original and then we'll right click on the copy and click merge group. So then we're going to add some effects to the overall group. So let's try a motion blur. And then I'm going to turn this down just about 10. Then let's see what else we can add. Um, let's see. A ripple? What would a ripple do? Maybe let's, wow, that's a lot. Um, let's add just a tiny bit of ripple because we do have that glitch effect in there. 
but I don't want to make it too strong, so let's try 8. Yeah, that changes it just a bit. All right, and then I'm going to add one more uh, kind of lighting effect to it. I'm just going to grab a black brush and make sure my hardness is all the way down. Zoom out again. We're just going to do the same thing we did, except I'm just going to drag it down from the top a little more. Let's see. Get some darkness up there and then maybe in the corner. Kind of missing this edge with the brush. Just getting the corners a bit. It's a little too dark up there. I've already got a lot of black over there. And then I'm going to change this to, let's try multiply. Where's that at? I can't see it. I'm blind. There it is. That didn't do a thing. <laughs> Color bird. Not a thing. Lighten. Nope. Soft light. Ah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so with all of that, I think we have a successful glitchy text and a cool 3D background look, like the 3D glasses look. So I'm going to call this a done banner. Uh, if I was going to make this for my channel or Twitter or Facebook or whatever, I may put some um, social media links and stuff like that on there. But this is the effect pretty much done. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. And don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.